Hey guys, Auspicious Aussie here, and welcome to episode 22 of Black Canvas Grappling. Now, we're, we're pretty much just going to continue on where we left off last episode. Obviously, there's quite a few different things that we need to do uh, in, in regards to booking. So, next episode is actually going to be the final tour show, and then the Test of Champions pay-per-view. So, with that, we need to really sort of... We don't need to ramp up the storytelling because we obviously know what's going to be happening between Funakoshi and Reizan Okamoto. But I, what I would like to do is maybe do a little bit more in regards to Binruku Kentori and Tanyu Toshisai. Ooh, interesting. We've got Finio Faraday changing his wrestling style here. Um, I guess he was like a... I'm assuming he was a brawler prior to this and he's changed to a regular wrestler. That's pretty interesting. Anyway, uh, also worth mentioning, we're up to, we've just hit 750,000 in our bank account. So we are getting pretty close. Obviously, we're not going to just spend all of that money straight away on our, on our own broadcast. We need to kind of, I guess, build up a little bit more before we, we do actually go into that. Um, so let me, let me go to investments once again. I know I've done this quite a few times over the last few episodes. Um, I think I'm deciding to go with Canada. I feel like Canada would probably be the, the best option. Obviously, there, there is Oceania, which was kind of my first choice until we looked at it last episode. But I just feel like Canada would be more beneficial. Do you know what? Let me, let's have a look at something. Let's have a look at the res the wrestling industry in Canada right now is a 91 and rising. So I'm assuming that the popularity gains from our network, our own broadcaster, would be would be massive. Uh, whereas if you look at uh, Oceania, which is essentially Australia and New Zealand, uh, it's currently 58 and falling, although it does have a, a much better economy. Now, obviously, if you look at it this way, the, the faster you can gain popularity, the more money you'll be able to make because we'll eventually be able to actually get a pay-per-view or a TV deal and still, depending on what type of deal it is, still be able to show it on our own broadcaster as well. So, with that said, you want to try and get, get a deal as fast as possible. And if we can get a pay-per-view deal uh, for our events, that would be that'd be massive because we'd be making... A solid few hundred thousand just on pay-per-view sales per month. And uh, obviously we're, we're going to still continue to, to run on Shogun TV. So that's kind of my, my game plan. What I should really look at, um, I might do it off camera because I don't want to go into too much detail, is look at the fastest way for us to get on, t on an actual TV network or a pay-per-view broadcaster. Uh, you know, in you know, essentially in either of those two regions, whether it be Canada or whether it be Oceania. Anyway, do some more meddling. Uh, unfortunately, still no effect. Uh, kind of sucks, but I mean, there's nothing we can do except just continue to try and work on it. Uh, we're also up to a 37 for our wrestling industry in Japan, so that's not too bad. All right, what are we going to do tonight, though? That's the question. Now, I feel like the main event, you know, obviously we're, we're doing tag main events is kind of a, a pretty common, I guess, tradition in Japan for the tour shows. So I think we're going to we're going to try and continue with that. Uh, and I think what we want to do. I wanted to have Furusawa in this match, but I'm not sure if I want him to lose because he is actually on 64 popularity uh, and he's the most over member of our roster. Uh, he's also got white hot momentum, so you really don't want him to be taking a loss. Especially as we're going to be using him for our main event of our season finale. Um, Okamoto, obviously, he does need to be involved because it's essentially going to be him. That's uh, going to be... Actually, I know what we're going to do. Let's do Shining Force. Taking on Funakoshi and Reizan Okamoto. I actually think this could be a good match and obviously a, a pretty good way for us to uh, 
to try and continue the the Shining Force dissension in the ranks sort of storyline we got going on at the moment. So that's fairly easy. That's fairly good as well. I think that should be a, a obviously a, a solid main event with uh, at least three of our big stars in there. Now, in regards to the rest of the show, uh, who is our... Let me go back. I need to see who our number one contenders are for the tag titles. Because I'm pretty sure we did... We did make somebody... Um, I can't remember who it was, though. I guess it was Team Taku again. Um, but I think I did say that I wanted to... Alright, so let's actually have a proper number one contenders match. And let's have Team Taku taking on Kamasaka and Kiyotaka. Now, I did get a really good suggestion from one of the previous episodes for our stable name with Kamasaka, Kiyotaka, and Yurigataya. And I felt like it was pretty, it was pretty fitting. And uh, Yurigataya does give off a certain vibe. And I guess that's kind of the, the vibe of, well, in my opinion, might not be what everybody sees, but I feel like he gives off a Minoru Suzuki vibe. Just that, you know, obviously they're both essentially bald to an extent, um, but more just the, the mannerisms. I would believe that Urugataya would just beat down anybody that stands in his way, similar to how I kind of perceive Suzuki. Um, we're going to go with a good match here. Uh, Okamasa taking on Yurigataya. And then I think we're going to give Yurigataya his, uh, his own match. Uh, his own stable, sorry. And I think we'll, we'll try and do that through an angle. I might save it for the pay-per-view. I'm not 100% sure. Anyway. This one, though, is going to be our technical masterclass. Uh, I think we want a slow build on that as well. There we go. Okamasa's got 64 technical. Okamasa's a guy that I really kind of do want to push as well. He he could be like an upper mid-card level talent for us. At the moment, we're, we're severely underusing him. That's for sure. Uh, our next match, let's go with a 4-on-4. Four four. And I think we'll use import. So let's go with Finley... Giant Brody, Animal Harker, and Wild Red Stallion. And they can take on Cloaked in Shadows, and I guess Yokikawa and Sen, maybe? I think that should be relatively good. And we'll give Finley a nice victory there as well. I really want to try and, um, I'm not sure how his momentum's doing. But he, as you can see, he's pretty decent, so... I kind of want to... I want to try and get him back up to a main event major star level. At least so we can have him come in and possibly challenge... For the, uh, the world title at some stage. Alright. So we're pretty much within time, but let's add one more match to the card. Let's go a six-man tag, and let's have Furusawa team up with Matsushita and, I guess, Suki, maybe? Yeah, that's fine. And I guess they can take on Akoma. Um, I'm wondering if... Uh, Agata, is he still injured? Uh, I think he might be okay. Let me let me just go back for a second. Okay, no, he's still he's still got fifteen days. For some reason, I thought he was no longer injured. Anyway, all right. Well, with that being said, I might just go a regular tag match actually. And let's just go with uh, Suki and Furusawa. And they can take on Blaster Coma and Ginji Kisaka.
And I think we'll give Suki the victory because he probably needs it a little bit more. I don't really see Furosawa's popularity going any higher. Uh, yeah, I mean, that looks pretty good. Okay. All right, so let's do some angles. Uh, can Yuri Gatai do an angle? Probably check these things before we... He really can't. He really can't. And he does have really bad star quality, but he's very, very talented in the ring. Well, that's going to be a bit of a problem, because if I make a stable with him and the other two, it's it's not going to be great. Although, what I could do is let's do an angle. And what we're going to do in the angle is have Yurigataya. Let's have all three of them joining up. And uh, they're essentially just going to be attacking Team Taku. So we'll go with Yoshinaka Taku and Toshinobu. And uh, I guess they can be rated on selling. Not too sure how good their selling actually is, but either way. I feel like that's a, a pretty, pretty good angle. So post-match... Oops, I messed up our matches there. The post-match after the number one contenders match, obviously Kamasaka Kiyotaka are going to lose. So that kind of plays out. And uh, I guess it's going to be the, the start of the Eurogun stable. That's what they're going to be called, Eurogun. All right, and then I guess for the post-match angle, let's go with Brunerkuk and Tori, and let's go with Tosh. What's his name? Yeah, Tanya Toshisai. And uh, there's going to be some uh, some arguing between these two. And that's going to kind of end the show. All right. So one more match. Just go another tag match. And let's have the American Cobras. Actually, let's, let's go with Miura and Yoshizawa. And I guess they can take on James Diaz. Also, we didn't fire those guys yet. So we're really going to be doing that soon. And I guess he can team up with Iki Hisaka. And that'll be our pre-show. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Obviously a non-title match. All right, let's run the show. So we're starting off with a 48, and we have Miura and Yoshizawa defeating James Diaz and Iki Hisaka in 12:24, when Inajiro Yoshizawa pinned James Diaz with an end of the world. And we had Hisaka off his game, unfortunately. We then go into the main show with our technical masterclass, kicking us off, getting a 57 rating, where we have Masashi Yurigataya defeating Shiruku Okamasa in 20-30. Fly pinfall with a jumbo backdrop suplex. A pretty good match. Thought it might have done a little bit better, but as you can see there, their in-rings are relatively low compared to the actual match rating itself. So it was it was pretty well booked. We then go into a, well, to the eight-man tag match, getting a 45, where we have Import being Big Bruiser Finley, Giant Brody, Animal Harker, and Wild Red Stallion, defeating Cloaked in Shadows and Yokikawa and Sen in 1141, when Big Bruiser Finley pinned Shadow Ichimori with an Atomic Spinebuster. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's essentially a Young Lions match for the most part. We've got three Young Lions in there, uh, along with, I guess... Two and a half more, two and a half stable members of our roster, and then I guess another two on the other on the other side of the the teams. We then go into a 56 rating for our number one contenders match for the tag titles, and we have Team Taku defeating Kamisaka and Kiyotaka in 11:50 on Yoshinaka Taku pinned Kiyotaka with a full Nelson bomb. And yeah, unfortunately, yeah, Toshinobu's really just not, he's not doing well at the moment. He's too old, and he's, uh, he's definitely getting past his time. We then go into our 41 rated angle, which is the angle, the fighting angle, where we have our new stable, 
they're not yet joined up or aligned together. Um, obviously, post-match, Yurigataya comes down to the ring. Um, and then, basically, you can kind of see him ordering Kamisaka and Kiyotaka to attack the Takus uh, once. Well, they're obviously celebrating their win. And, uh, yeah, Yurigataya gives a, gives a few orders and allows them to, to start the beatdown uh, before joining in himself. All right, we then go into a 62-rated match. Pretty good, um, but obviously quite a few good competitors in this one. But we have Mibuchi Furusawa and Suki defeating Blastokoma and Ginji Kisaka in 12 and a half minutes when Suki pinned Ginji Kisaka with a Mountain Suki. And yeah, as you'd expect, Kisaka being the, the weak link in the match. But, you know, he, he did pretty well getting a 34. Um, obviously probably being carried quite a bit by the other team. Okay, that's a really, really good main event. We get an 80-rated tag team match for our main event. Obviously a lot of talent in this match. Uh, but good to see another 80. It's been a while. And we have Reizen Okamoto and Funakoshi, who will be facing each other at Test of Champions for the world title. And they defeat Shining Force in 20 minutes, 21 seconds. When Reizan Okamoto pinned Tanyu Toshisai with a Brain Buster Suplex. Yeah, I mean, this is just a really, really solid match. We had Tori with a 76, Funakoshi with a 75, and then both other members getting a 66. So, very, very well performed. Obviously, you got the excellent chemistry between Shining Force as well. Okay, and then we got our final angle, which uh, unfortunately only gets a 63. And we have the two members of Shining Force arguing against each other, being Bunraku Kintori and Tanyu Toshisai. And as you can see, Tori was uh, very poor when trying to improvise dialogue. All right, so we get a 72, which is actually quite a, a few points higher than what we've been getting recently. Like I've said over the last few episodes, 69 seems to be our consistent rating. So it's, you know, very nice to get a 72. And of course, it does increase our popularity in the other seven regions apart from Kansai. Which is also very important because we do need 35 in one of our sort of neighboring regions if we are going to get up to medium size. All right, so nothing important there. Storm Spillane just signing a, a one-night deal with New York City. Um, so yeah, let's just get straight into the next tour date. And we'll get book in that show as well. All right, we've got another pay rise request, this time for Sujuru Sen. And, uh, you know, we have, to, we have to give it to him as well. No, just having a little look here. I want to make sure I, I keep a bit of a close eye on some of the people that are retiring in case we want, you know, someone doing something for us backstage. Anyway, we've got two incidents here, uh, but both, I assume, are with uh, Protégé Mentor improving. Um, we've got Furusawa passing on tips on selling to Shuga Amano. And then we also have, yeah, Furusawa passing on some more selling tips, this time to Koyo Kinoshita. Okay. Once again, generic venue. Let's, let's, let's try another medal. We may as well just try it. Um, I think we'll go with Asono and James Diaz once again. And once again, I've forgotten to, to actually fire those guys. Um, I'm going to say that I'll do it after we book this show. But honestly, I'm probably just going to forget about it again. Anyway. Okay, so for this main event, I'm kind of wondering what we actually do. I think a singles match... 
But I'm not too sure who we're going to put in the, in the match itself. I feel like Suki can go in. And maybe Tori. I feel like that's going to be a really solid main event. And we are... I think we're going to give the victory to Tori. I think he needs it a little bit more. Um, but we're going to, we're going to do something to, to try and play it out a little bit more as well. Uh, we'll have a, we'll have an angle after it as well, just to, to kind of, you know, proceed with what we're doing at the moment. Anyway, another match we want to do is, let's do Yokikawa and Sen taking on the American Cobras. Uh... I'm wondering if we can do 20 minutes. We probably can't. Maybe 16? This also might be able to be our technical masterclass. Yeah, it definitely could be. Alright, so this will be our first match on the card. Nice 16 minute masterclass. And uh, we don't actually get any penalties, so... I don't want to see how long we can go for before we get the overuse penalty for Yokikawa. Okay, so we can do 18 minutes, but not 20. Okay, that's fine. Uh, up next, let's uh, let's go with a tag match and let's have Big Bruiser Finley team up with Giant Brody, take on Nalzang Goto and Rockymon Matsushita. I think for the, the pay-per-view, I might do Big Bruiser Finley taking on Rockymon Matsushita. As I feel like that'd be a, a pretty interesting way. And I might actually give the loss to Finley here. And see if Rockymon will actually get the victory, if that'll allow us to do it. Uh, I might try and make this the Steal the Show match as well. Alright, so Finley's unhappy, but I guess I can just keep him strong. And that should hopefully be fine. Yeah, there we go. Alright. So that's nice. Now, next match, we're going to go with a six-man tag. Um, and I really... Yeah, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do here. Let's have Mitsukuri and Kinoshita. And they're going to take on... Miura and Yoshizawa. Let's also chuck somebody else onto each team. Alright, so Furusawa can go on the Tag Champs team. And then let's have... Um, maybe Roku Sotomura? And go on the uh, the Young Lions team. Yeah, I mean, that looks kind of good enough, I guess. And again, with uh, with Furusawa, we're kind of just maintaining him a little bit. Um, because we do need to just kind of wait a couple more months before his match is actually going to take place. And uh, I really do want to make that match like a, a special, special match. I might even try and give it like 40 minutes plus... Like 40, maybe 50 minutes, depending on on what sort of happens. And we'll make it like a spectacle as well. Alright, so I guess to, uh, to round off this show as well, let's go with a tag team match. Let's go with Ipit, Tsutsai, and Okamasa. And uh, I guess they can take on the wild animals. Just a nice easy match. Uh, and I do want to give Okamasa a victory here as well. Like I said, I feel like he kind of deserves it. And I do quite often overlook him, so. There we go. Let's swap those two around. Uh, actually, let me swap these two around. Yeah, I like that a little bit better. Alright, so let's do one pre-show and then we'll do our angles as well. So let's have Funikoshi and James Diaz team up to take on... Sugar Amano and 
Asono? Yeah, I mean, that kind of works. World champion teaming up with James Diaz. Possibly another future world champion down the line. Once he matures a little bit more. Of course, he is still in the, like, 18 or 19, I think. All right. So, with that said, to round off the show, we're going to have Bunrakuk and Tori come out, and uh, he's basically going to absolutely crucify his, uh, his tag team partner. So let's have, let's have Tanyu, um, but he'll be off screen. So obviously, he's just going to be talking about him. Uh, and then I guess we can have another angle. I'm thinking we go for... Let's go for Finley onto Rockymon. Rockymon Masashita. And I guess... We can give that one eight minutes as well. All right. Actually, let's give it six. I don't want to get the, the penalty. We did have one of those last episode, and it... Uh, it definitely tanked our rating for the overall show. So that'll go after their match. And uh, I think that looks pretty good. Alright, so let's run it. We start off with a 47 for our pre-show match. We have Funakoshi and James Diaz defeating Yuta Asono and Shuga Amano in 12-17. When Funakoshi pinned Shuga Amano with a butterfly backbreaker. And of course, as you'd expect, Funakoshi carrying the match. Alright, we then start the actual tour show off with a 60 rated tag team match, of course, being our technical masterclass. And we have the American Cobras defeating Yokikawa and Sen in 18 minutes and a half, when Marvel Malloy pinned Sajuru Sen with a Cobra strike. And yeah, Storm Spillane carrying the match with a 68 in-ring performance there. I think he's actually getting better in-ring performances than guys like Tanyu Toshisai and Reza Nakamoto. So Storm's definitely doing some good things at the moment. Yeah, 60 rated tag match there. We then go into a 50 rated tag team match where we have Naozane Goto and Rokumon Matsushita defeating Big Bruiser Finley and Giant Brody in 1225. When Rocky Mon, sorry, Rocky Mon Matsushita pinned Big Bruiser Finley with a one-handed choke slam, and of course, the uh, the next angle. But this is a pretty good match. This next angle getting a 59 from Finley, and we have him cutting an angle onto Rocky Mon, and of course, that is going to lead us into their match. So let's get that one pre-booked in. It's going to be you know a relatively simple match. Um, obviously, white hot momentum for Finley, and uh, we do want to kind of try and continue that. I might even give him a bonus, so we can try and make sure that he'll, I guess, be performing to his best ability or the best of his ability. And so I think you know it could be a pretty good match. I really want to try and give it 16 minutes. Um, yeah. We're going we're gonna to do it anyway. 16 minutes. It's, it's got a slow build on it, doesn't it? Oh, I hope it does anyway. Um, he's going to struggle. But at the same time, I kind of want it to be slow built and give it a, a decent amount of time. All right, so we then go into our six-man tag, which gets a 60 rating. And we have Mabuchi Furusawa teaming up with our tag team champions, Miura and Yoshizawa. And they defeat Rocky Sotomura, uh, along with the tag team of Mitsukuri and Kinoshita in 12-16, when Furusawa submitted Rocky Sotomura with a Furusawa armbar. And yeah, Furusawa, of course, head and shoulders above everybody else in the match. We then go into our main event, and it does really, really well, getting a 79. Obviously, both these guys are really, will have good, really good momentum at the moment. And, of course, pretty good popularity as well. But we do have Bunrakuk and Tori defeating Suki in 1942, 
by pinfall with a spinning forearm smash. Yeah, 79 is really good. 74 in ring for Tori and a 66 there for Suki. So yeah, Storm Spillane also kind of outperforming Suki as well, which I find pretty incredible. All right. And of course we, oh, okay, I messed up. I messed up big time. You guys are probably uh, shouting at me. Yeah, this is, uh, is going to greatly affect our overall rating. I was wondering where this match was. Interesting. All right, so we get a 44 for this misplaced match. Really, I, I think it was when I put that angle at the end. I messed up a few things. And we have Ipitsutsai and Okamasa defeating the Wild Animals in 12.03. When Shiruku... Okamasa submitted Wild Red Stallion with a Scorpion Deathlock. And that is really going to tank our rating. And uh, there is the final angle that was supposed to happen after the, our real main event. Anyway, he gets us a 69. And we have Bruno Kick and Tori. And uh, he's basically, you know, talking a bit, a bit more smack to his tag team partner. Who's obviously not there. Uh, seeing as he's off screen. Uh, but he basically says that's how you get it done. That's how you win a main event. And that is how you, or well, that is how I represent myself and our tag team. Obviously, throwing a bit more shade towards Tanyu. And yeah, as you can see, that's how important a main event is. Just that that one little mis mishap in the the match, you know, the match placement, I guess. And our 79, which probably would have got us about a 72, 71 overall show rating. And uh, it unfortunately only gets to say 55. Now I could go back. Obviously I did save. But I don't want to go back and pick it up and replay the show. Purely for the fact that, you know, these things happen. Small mistakes do happen. Uh, obviously a 55 for the overall show rating. It's still exactly what our popularity is in Kansai. So we didn't lose any popularity. Uh, and we still actually gained it in the other three regions. So it's it's fine. Anyway, we've got Furusawa with an opinion here. And, uh, of course, he's uh, pushing one of his protégés. And he thinks Shiga Mano is charismatic. And he can see the kid doing well in the future. I would agree. Definitely with uh, Furusawa's help, he is going to, to be quite a, a decent wrestler in the future. Anyway, uh, that's going to wrap up the episode, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy. If you did, make sure you smash the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel if you're a new viewer or if you're not subscribed for whatever reason. Um, just want to say thank you as well to everybody that is subscribed for hitting, hitting the uh, notification bell. Uh, I think we're up to 8.3% of my subs that have the notification bell turned on. Um, and it was at about 7.8 uh, a couple of months ago. So thank you guys. I appreciate it. And as always, apart from that, take it easy and goodbye. Oh, one more thing. I almost forgot. I almost forgot. Let's fire these two guys. Um, I'm not actually too sure. How do you fire someone? I uh, I really don't know. Uh, maybe talk to them. Ah, oh, career. That'd probably be it. Um. Maybe contracts, I guess. No, that's not it either. Um, that's a good question. I really do not know how to fire someone. The only thing I can think of is maybe their status. Okay, anyway, I'll do this off screen. Um, and I'll fire them for the next episode just to make sure that they're gone and uh, that they're no longer with us, which will be good because they're both pretty, pretty negative influences backstage. Anyways, with that said, thank you for watching and goodbye, guys.